this episode, I'm going to show you a quick way to add avatars to your Rails application using Active Storage and Devise. So we're going to boot up a Rails application using the Jumpstart template. And this is going to have Bootstrap and Devise already installed for us, so we don't have to fiddle with those things and we can focus on the avatars. So let's call this Project Creatively Avatars. Then we will cd into our avatars directory and we'll run rails active storage colon install. That will install the one migration that will create the tables necessary for active storage and we can run rails db migrate to run those. Now if you aren't using the jumpstart template, go ahead and run rails g devise colon install and then you'll want to run rails g devise user to create your user model. That will get devise set up for you and then you can finally run rails g devise colon views which will copy over the views into your application from the gem and that way you can customize them because that's what we're going to be doing next. Our jumpstart template has already done that for us and so we can jump right into the devise views. So we want registrations edit .html.erb and we're going to add a field here at the top um, and this is going to be our avatar. So we will rename it to avatar and this is where it will be uploaded. So we don't really need any of these other options here. Um, optionally you could wrap this in um, some classes from Bootstrap if you wanted. But what we're really interested in doing here is saying let's split this with a row and let's have div class equals column small 4 and here we will print out the resource.avatar.attached question mark and we'll keep track of whether or not the user has an attached avatar. Um, we can simply print that out for testing but we can also just say if resource is attached let's print out the avatar and otherwise we could actually default to something like gravatar if we wanted. So we'll probably put that in here because I already have the gravatar gem in the jumpstart template. So here we'll say class column small 8 to put our field on the right side. And this obviously requires us to have the avatar on our user models. So then if we open up app models user.rb, we can go to the bottom and say has one attached avatar. That's going to make sure that it connects with active storage for us. And then we can go to our application controller and you're going to want to add these lines if you don't have them from the template. So you're going to use before action configure permitted parameters if device controller. And then you can add this protected section down here. And the one we're interested in modifying it here is avatar should be added to the account update. If you would like to provide an avatar when you sign up, go ahead and do that. But that's not super common. So we're going to just add this to the account update. What this is doing is just registering with Devise that the name and the avatar are both extra fields that we want to make sure that Devise accepts when we submit the edit account form. Now if we come back to our registrations edit.html erb file, we can go here and change this text field to a file field so that that will be a form field uh, for uploading images and then I'm also going to drop in this Gravatar image URL and this is coming from a gem that is automatically in our gem file from the jumpstart template called Gravatar image tag. That's going to give us a default avatar here that will just be anything that might be on Gravatar with their email address and we're going to have it as size 40 and let's make height and width size 40 and we'll say rounded circle to make rounded edges all the way around. Um, if you want rounded edges where it's just the corners are rounded, you could say rounded, but we're going to do rounded circle here. Then for our avatar, whenever that is uploaded, we simply say image tag and we say resource.avatar and that will include the image. Now we're going to want to resize this so it's a normal size. And so we can say variant resize and we can say 100 by 100 bang, which will make it square. And so that will basically make it resize to 100 by 100. So we could do the same thing here if we wanted to make this match in size, which we probably should. So we'll say 100 and our height and width will be 100. 
Then just like the Gravatar tag, we probably want to add class rounded circle to this, and that will make sure it's rounded and it matches the same rounded that we have on the Gravatar tag. So with all of that set up, we can start up our Rails app and then we can create a new account and test this out. So we'll say chris at gorails.com, password, password, and we can go to our users edit route, which will also be linked in the uh, nav bar in Jumpstart. And this is my avatar from uh, Gravatar, and so that's our default. We haven't had the user upload anything, and it'd still be nice to display some sort of avatar, and that's where Gravatar comes in. It allows us to upload an avatar, and then it's usable by any website, which is super cool. We don't have to upload av avatars all over the place. Now, to override that, we can just choose a file, and I've already downloaded one here, and we can fill out our current password for device to make this upload and change. And if we click that, we're not gonna see anything right now because we haven't updated our nav bar. But if we go back to settings, you'll see that I've uploaded this avatar. And you can test with a bunch of UI faces here on uifaces.co. They have a whole bunch of them that you can go through. So you can download a bunch of these and see what it looks like to have those different faces in your application. So that's pretty great and makes avatars very, very simple. Now, anywhere that you're going to want to display the avatar, you're gonna want probably something like this. And this probably is best put in a helper. So if we go to application helper.rb, we can open this up and add a method for user avatar. And we can pass in the user and you can give it a size. And so we might wanna set a size as a default, say 40. And then we can say, if user.avatar uh, attached, then we want an image tag, or actually we don't even need that necessarily. What we can do is we can say user.avatar.variant resize to size, by size, bang, and that will give us the avatar itself, which will embed in an image tag, and then we can use this gravatar here, and grab this, and paste that in. And so then this can be the dynamic size, and rather than using current user, we will get rid of that. So now we have a helper where we can set an image tag to the result of that method call. So user avatar, we'll pass in the user, and this could be current user, it could be a user from a forum post, or anywhere in your application, just pass a user object in. And in our case, we're inside the device form, so we could use resource, and we can pass in that size, and we can simply say, we want it to be 100. And so there, we can then add rounded circle after that, and we can get rid of this, and now we've made a generic helper that will apply either to Gravatar or if they've customized their avatar using active storage, we will use that instead. And so if we refresh our page now, we should see absolutely no changes, and that's exactly what we see here. And the last thing we wanna do is we wanna update our nav bar to use this new helper. So let's open up our nav bar partial, and let's find that Gravatar. Gravatar, there we go. And we can paste that in instead. And rather than doing 100 size, we'll do 40, and we can get rid of the old one. Now in our nav bar though, we don't wanna use resource, we wanna use current user because we aren't inside of a device form. So using current user here, we'll just swap that variable out and we'll be good to go. So if we go back to our application and we refresh our page, we get our avatar up here now. And it's a little big, so let's swap that down to 20 pixels and see how that looks. There we go, that's much better and more reasonable size. So now we have working avatars that we can use anywhere in our application, and this will use our Gravatar by default, and then if the user chooses to upload a different avatar, we will use that from our own storage backend. Now if you'd like to change where these files get stored, you can use all of the active storage functionality to upload images to S3, 
DigitalOcean Spaces, Google Cloud Storage, Azure, any of those options that you might like. By default, this will store to disk, so keep that in mind. Um, you'll probably want to upgrade that, at least in production, but in development, it's totally fine to use the disk storage. So the way that you do that is you simply edit config storage.yaml, and you can change where you have your file stored once you've filled out your keys here. So go ahead and fill out your keys, and then once you have decided where you wanna store that, you can go into your different environments, config environments, development, and you can look for active storage here. And you'll see that it's currently set to local, and obviously you would change that to the name in your config storage.yaml file for S3, DigitalOcean Spaces, Google Cloud, whatever your service you want to host your images on, you can go ahead and make that change there. And that is it. So there's not too much to adding images and file uploads to devise. With Active Storage, this is incredibly easy because we don't even really have to do much um, thinking about how our database is structured because they take care of creating the tables for us. And this will be compatible with Rails 6 and everything as you go forward. And so that will be very handy. So as you can tell here, this user avatar process works for device, but it could also work for any other user authentication system you would like. Um, there's really nothing special to it. You just need a way to have a controller upload the file and then display that uh, avatar in the views. And so that's really it. We happen to use the device controllers to do that, but you could use any other authentication system you would like. So that is it for this episode, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.